Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> وقال الله تبارك وتعالى في شأن حبيبه مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد مبارك وسلم صل عليه Once again dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the yeah, the third lecture in Tafsir of Quran and the second one in Science and the Holy Quran and in the first lecture on Science and the Holy Quran we just proved uh, we just showed the proof why we can use and how we can use and how we should use the Holy Quran to understand science and, the, and, and I suppose the main point there is this we use the Quran to prove science not we use science to prove the Quran you can do it the other way but I mean you have to understand the Quran is right therefore if science agrees with the Holy Quran then science could be right okay <clears throat> but you have to go to the root words of the Holy Quran, you shouldn't take the translations that actually, you know, might be wrong. So I thought the second lecture would start up on the creation. All around us is the universe. It's absolutely huge. It's incomprehensible. It's unimaginable. But Allah created it somehow. So there are a number of verses on the creation and the so-called Big Bang. So, uh, in order to understand those verses, we have to un understand a little bit of what science, uh, the current scientific theories are about the creation and how they've come about that. And that, you'll f I think, you'll find very interesting because some of you have a scientific background, some of you don't. Um, and those who do doesn't mean, you know, you've... you've researched the Big Bang and the creation and everything so <coughs> a little bit of background is very important otherwise we won't be able to understand the verses as well as we need to so I've written some bullet points no diagrams or pictures I'm afraid all right I haven't been able to take a picture of the universe all right but anyway so the first point to note well, I will, I will bring a book in next, next time, inshallah, which has got loads of pictures from the Hubble telescope, etc. The universe began from nothing. There was nothing, then this universe existed, right? I'm not saying that, the scientists are saying it. Allah said in the Quran, Kun fayakun. He just has to say, be and it is. So from nothing, something happens. So science already given the tafsir of the Holy Quran without realizing it, right? Yeah. And they've they've worked out how old the universe is from various satellites they've sent up measuring the radiation and the size and then all this and they've worked it out it does change regularly this figure all right this is the latest figure 13.7 billion years old i mean it's now 13.7 oh, 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 oh one now is now i suppose but <laughs> 13.7 billion years old, right? And they use the term singularity. They said the universe was a singularity. You know, Allah is one. So I would say Allah's creation is reflected in the oneness of God, isn't it? So when they say singularity, I'm very happy with that term. Alhamdulillah, right? It was just one. And everything was compressed. It was so small. 
In fact, space didn't even exist, so you can't even talk about space and time. Time started at time zero, when the singularity suddenly, if without, without any cause, suddenly existed. Right? And this singularity contained everything, all the laws, all the particles, all the energy, it contained everything. And energy and matter coexisted. So that's what the singularity is. And the reason they give it a name is because they don't understand what it is, so they give it a name. All right? And normal scientific laws don't apply. Laws of gravity, thermodynamics, the, the, the laws between the atoms, none of it applies. It's all incomprehensible because you can't understand it. So they give it a name, singularity. Even the density was infinite at that time. The temperature was infinite. The, the size was infinitely small. That's how they can understand it. So they're using terms which actually don't have any meaning in, in language. Infinite, you can't put a figure on it. Infinite means infinitely big. You can't say, this is the, this is the number infinity, because I can just add one to it, isn't it? Infinity plus one, you know. That's, that's bigger than infinity, isn't it? That's, that's wrong, isn't it? That, it's infinitely big, you can't put a number on it. So singularities do exist in the present day, uh, in black holes, they say every black hole as it, at its core has a singularity. To be honest, they're just guessing, right? No one's, no one's seen a black hole, because it's black, isn't it? You can't show me a picture, here's a black hole, right? How do I know it's a black hole? It's black, isn't it? Nothing there. But you find singularities in the Romulan warbirds in Star Trek, right, as well. That's how the spaceships are powered, apparently, by singularities. Now, we, we hear the term Big Bang. Big Bang, although it means an explosion, actually what it is, it's an expansion process. It, it's actually a very good term, the Big Bang, which is why it's been adopted. But it's an expa a very massive expansion, and very, very quickly. And to be honest, an explosion is actually an expansion. Why, why do bombs cause injuries? Got to be careful what I say here, isn't it? Why, <laughs> why do bombs cause injuries? Because it's the expansion of the air. That's what causes injuries. A bomb explodes, the air expands so quickly, you know, your, your arm goes with the air. You know, your body gets blown apart. Vehicles get blown apart because the air expands so, so quickly. <laughs> Hopefully you knew that. Oh. Um, so, scientists say time and space, it had a beginning. There was a time zero. There was a, 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 um, a time when time equaled zero and it started ticking. All right? And now we are 13.7 billion years into that time frame and there was there was nothing at all or we don't know what there was but there was nothing and the universe started okay that that is a very broad understanding of how the what the universe is what the big bang was etc but i want to go into a little bit more detail because um otherwise it's not really a a lecture, if you just you can get this off the internet to be honest and watch programs and stuff. But let, let's understand a little bit more detail. The universe didn't begin in space, the Big Bang didn't happen in space. Space existed in the singularity, right? The singularity created space, so you can't, you can't say, Let's go outside this universe. That question is nonsensical. There's no space outside the, this is a space, we're in it. You can't jump out of your time frame. You can't, you know, I think I'll, I'll go, I think I'll just jump to Sunday and come back to Friday and then end up on, on Saturday. It just, you can't do it. Unless you've got spiritual abilities like the Prophet said, and he could do it. Or you're a Qutub, you know, you can do it. It's not a problem. Time and space have no meaning, you have power over them. 
in the singularity, all the forces were combined. So gravity was there, uh, the, uh, the strong forces between the atoms were there. Uh, they were all combined, and once the singularity started expanding, then the forces started separating. You've heard of the great grand unification theory. They're trying to show that you know, all the forces are like one force. They have a com commonality. They haven't proven it yet. I'm sure they will. But again, it all proves the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's when the universe was really young that it expanded v very, very quickly. When I say very, very quickly, even faster than the speed of light. Now remember, you, you've heard the phrase, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. Well, I'm sorry, they've contradicted themselves. The, the universe expanding when it was very young, expanded faster than the speed of light. So, someone with the power of the, you know, of the creation can actually uh, have, can travel faster than the speed of light. So when we say the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, went on Miraj and it was faster than light, and you say nothing can travel faster, I'm sorry, but he can. The universe was made from his nur. Have we talked about that? I'm sure we've given lecture on this. The universe was made from his nur, sallallahu So time was made from his nur. Space was made from his nur. So it's irrelevant to him. He has control over it. And when I say young, they've, they've quantified it here. One hundredth of a billionth of a trillionth of a second. You know what? It just doesn't mean anything that. It just shows how amazing the, you know, the process was. So the universe was infinitely hot. As it expanded, the temperature had to spread, therefore it cooled down. Yeah. The, the energy in the, in the universe now is the same as when it was created. Right? But because it spread over a huge distance, the temperature, it's less. Now what, what the scientists say, for the first sort of couple of hundred thousand years, or 380,000 years, it was still really hot and it was still really expanding fast. And there was no star sun, there was no stars, there weren't even atoms, there was just a, a, a massive cloud. And remember this for the next lecture, I haven't talked about it in this lecture, but there's a massive cloud, atoms are smashing into each other, it was a real war, war zone, basically. And it was just, it's just like a fog. If you could see it, all you could see would be a fog. Because there's no stars, there's no suns, there's, there's no planets. Right? <coughs> and, and the reason they know this is because from that time, there's, there's a lot of radiation. It's, it's called cosmic background radiation. And in order for that universe to exist like that, the, the theory says you have to see this radiation now. If you see this radiation now, possibly that's what happened before. And they found it, they, they found this radiation. <clears throat> and it's only 400 million years into its existence when stars began to form. And, and, and astronomers say that's when the universe started to shine. That's when you could see, you know, the sun, uh, the sun, the stars, etc. So, 400 to 600 million years, that's when the universe just started to shine. That's, that's amazing, isn't it? And what are the evidences? Well, you've all heard of Hubble, the Hubble telescope. Hubble, he studied galaxies and he found the galaxies were all moving away like, from each other like that. And the distance between them was proportional to the speed that they were going away from each other. In other words, he, he realized everything was moving away from a central point. So if everything was moving away from a central point, it means if you go backwards in time and follow the, uh, where they were coming from, they would end up in one place. Hence they said, therefore, they was, everything was together and therefore it blew apart. So that's, that's, that's the theory he used, that's the evidence he's used. And the other evidence is that, as I said, the background radiation, it was discovered in the 1960s, these, these guys got the Nobel Prize for physics, whatever, but anyway, 
um, what they found was there was radiation and the radiation had a temperature now space is meant to be cold but this radiation had a background temperature of minus 270 degrees centigrade you might think that's cold but it's still above absolute zero absolute zero is when there's no energy in an atom at all that's absolute zero it's called zero degrees kelvin which is minus 273 i think degrees centigrade right so kelvin is a scale scientists use it's just the same as centigrade but it starts at as um, absolute zero so they found this cosmic radiation therefore they said the big bang did happen because these are the remnants of the big bang it's like you have a nuclear explosion go with the Geiger counter and you can find remnants of radiation oh, there must be a nuclear explosion here so that's what they've used this is the, the result of the explosion and also there's so much hydrogen and helium in the, in the universe and the models predict that there should be loads of hydrogen and helium rather than heavier elements there should be more hydrogen than anything else and there is so what, what we've summarized <coughs> is the evidence of the people's understanding of the Big Bang the expansion of the universe starting from a singularity but this requires faith to believe in it because you're, you're, you've got observations no one's seen the Big Bang you can't reproduce it you have to have faith in your observations you have to have philosophy you have to believe that there was once a time the rules didn't apply you know it's a lot of faith there so when people criticize us for our blind faith we should criticize well you, you've got blind faith you're, you're telling me that time existed everything was together I don't how can you believe that what's the evidence for that it's 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 your faith in what you've seen and your extrapolation of knowledge And the Big Bang is still a theory. <coughs> it's just widely accepted. Therefore, because it's widely accepted, no one's come up with something better. Therefore, it's, it's accepted as fact. It's the only model consistent with observations and generations of observations. But there are certain things the Big Bang doesn't answer. Right? Why did it happen? How come suddenly it happens? They can't answer that. They're just guessing. You'll hear lots of different theories. Um, how did these laws stabilize? How did that happen? How come the universe is so ordered? How come the laws coexist so beautifully in such a balance? How come everything is in proportion? They can't answer that. All they can do is observe and say, well, that's, that's the way it happens. Hang on, it doesn't happen that way. Without someone making it happen that way. Where did this energy come from? This energy is absolutely huge, right? Where did this energy come from? If you measure the energy in the universe, you can feel the sun from 93 million miles away. And that's, this is a small sun in, in, the, in the cosmic standards. 93 million miles away, we can feel the heat. Even now, you go out, you can feel the heat of it. You know, that's just one sun amongst 100 billion suns in the Milky Way and amongst another 100 billion galaxies like the Milky Way. We're not looking at a huge, absolutely huge amount of energy. And they can't answer that. They cannot answer that. Only Muslims can answer it. Only the Quran can answer it. <coughs> and what happened before the Big Bang? And what's outside the universe? You know, they can't answer that. Oh, these questions you can't ask. Well, hang on, I, as a scientist, I can ask them. I'm sorry. They say, oh, you can't go outside the universe because this is a... How do you know? That's just your guess, isn't it? Based on your, on your um, <laughs> limited thinking. So the Big Bang doesn't answer the reasons. 
It just explains what happens. But what they do accept, it's a supernatural, amazing, um, unimaginable event and inexplainable as well. You can't even explain it. You can't, there are no laws, you need new knowledge to explain it, what's happening. You, 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 you can't work, you can't imagine and figure it out. Now I want to add a few facts here because this is sort of like supplementary information because it has an impact on some of the things I want to talk about. Now they've said that light has a maximum speed. They say that light is the fastest thing in the universe. Nothing travels faster than light. Uh, although we've shown, I haven't said it, scientists have said it, when the universe was expanding in its early stages, and I, I believe it was around the size of the earth, it was actually expanding faster than light. Right. But then the laws didn't exist at that time. A different laws existed. So if that's true, we're looking at a star whose light takes, say, a thousand years to reach us. So we're looking at that star, how it was a thousand years ago, isn't it? Do you see? The sun's light takes eight minutes for us to reach us. So if the sun was to explode right now, we wouldn't feel it until eight minutes later. Right? Because the sun's light takes eight minutes to reach us. <clears throat> so we are seeing the sun as it was eight minutes ago. So the further distance you look, the further back in time you can see. Right? So if you look at a star that's um, one billion light years away, you're actually looking back in time by one billion years. So if you can look back to a star 10 billion light years away, you can actually look back 10 billion years. And they have done that. They have seen stars in the earliest stages of development. They've looked back huge distances using again the you know, telescopes like the Hubble. They looked at an area of space at Hubble. They kept it still for I think it was a three day exposure or four day exposure. Absolutely incredible. And what looks like a black area of space actually saw lots of young galaxies, young stars, absolutely incredible picture. So they're looking back at how Allah created the early universe, but they can't look back further than I think, uh, I think half a billion, you know, after half a billion years after the universe was, you know, was, was started, they can't look further back. There's a haze, there's a fog there. Yeah. <coughs> the other thing to know is gravity is it's a very powerful force and gravity can actually bend light yeah it can yeah sorry he might have proved it but he should get, really get a comb and comb his hair properly, but anyway. <laughs> Gravity, it bends... Thank you, right, thank you. Some of the sense of humour, thank you very much. Right? <laughs> Gravity actually bends light. So, if I was to shine, simply, if I was to shine a torch, and the torch went past, the light went past the sun, the torch light would actually bend round the sun. Okay, that's why a black hole light doesn't escape because gravity is so powerful it even doesn't allow light to escape right yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, it's it's been proven. They follow the star as it as the sun goes past it, and you can see the star is in the same position as it should be, because the star's light is being bent by the by the gravitational force of the sun. Right. 
That's why if you if you ever interested in traveling to uh, Mars as they're planning to, you can't have a conversation with anybody on Earth because it takes 20 minutes for light from Mars to reach the Earth, a radio signal, and then 20 minutes for the radio signal to come back to Mars. So you can't once you're in Mars, you can't have a com proper conversation with somebody on Earth. It's, there's always a 40, se 40 minute delay. Yeah? That's, how, that's how big we're talking about. That's, a, that's one of the nearest planets. <coughs> well, it's, it's for light, it's for radio waves, it's for electromagnetic radiation, so that includes radio waves. Sound is slower in air, yeah, yeah. That's with the lightning and the thunder. Yep, that's right. Right. So light, the other thing to know, light can behave as particles and waves, right? So you can get bits of light coming from far away. They're called quanta. Um, electrons are, they have mass, they have a charge, but they can behave like light as well. Hence you've got the electron microscope. So it's electrons behaving like light. Yeah? So that's called the wave particle duality theory. So we've always said the angels are made from light, but they can come in the form of human beings. And we said the Prophet sallam, is Nur and Bashar combined. Therefore he's he's light but in the form of a human being. The scientists science has proved that. Yeah, that it's possible. Wave particle duality. The other thing, energy can be converted into matter and matter into energy. <coughs> the sun is giving us heat and light, isn't it? But the sun is losing mass as a result of that. It's the sun's mass that's being changed into energy using the formula E equals mc squared. Energy is a product of mass times the velocity of light squared. And when the sun loses about, I think it's 0.015% of its mass, it'll, it'll extinguish itself. Can you imagine that? So the, the sun's mass is being converted into energy. That's what they're trying to create now on the Earth. They're trying to create the um, fusion reactors to try and use uh, the uh, uh, energy of mass. You, you must have seen this in, uh, what's that uh, film called? Um, Back to the Future. I think it's the second one. He has his flying ship and he puts bananas into the engine. That's a fusion engine. You know? that's, that's the theory behind it. <laughs> Right. The heavy elements which we have, we've we got ele light elements like hydrogen, helium. There's heavier elements like, you know, uh, uh, iron and carbon. These are made in the sun. And when the sun explodes and the planets are made from this explosion, right? So our matter, our molecules actually come from an exploding sun. So this sun which we have, this solar system which we have is actually from an older sun that's exploded so we are from the explosion of an older sun so we are made from stardust okay. or you can put another way from waste matter uh, <laughs> you can understand it both ways all right all matter has gravity, so we have gravity, right? But our gravity is so, so weak. And they pro they've proven this, they, they, there's, there's a mountain, and a scientist, he, he dropped, uh, I think it was a wire, down the side of the mountain. And the wire was, wasn't actually vertical, it was actually moving a little bit towards the mountain. Because the mountain was pulling it towards it. But it's, it's very, very small, very, very small measurement but he managed to measure it. And that's how they showed the mountain actually had gravity. How can you measure the air? Can you say 
this is this is no no it's it's very careful measurement it wasn't yeah. Yeah. I'm sure he, I'm sure he took that into account I'm sure he didn't get a ruler and try try and move it like that right. <coughs> now let's understand what the what the matter is okay um, say you have you've heard of the hydrogen atom right say the hydrogen atom say it was the size of uh, say a big, think of a massive mosque say it was the size of a massive mosque alright not as big as the Kaaba Sharif mosque but say like the blue mosque in uh, uh, Turkey right? if that was the size of an atom the nucleus of the atom would be a grain of sand that's, that's how much an atom is it's, it's mostly space, it's mostly nothing or if an orange was the nucleus of hydrogen, so orange was basically a proton, the electron would be a mile away going round and round. And the electron would be as small as a pinhead. So most of the universe is actually empty space. Right? And they've worked it out 99.9999% space. So when you say to a person, you know, your brain's empty, you've got nothing in your head, it's actually true. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Another one with a sense of humour, thank you very much. 99.999% yes, right. of our brains are actually empty. <coughs> <laughs> so when someone says to you, be, become a fakir, and you say, what's a fakir? You say, oh, Fakir is someone who puts himself at nothing. He's actually right, you're nothing. You're mostly empty. <laughs> thank you, thank you, right, okay, right. But that's an incredible, that's actually an incredible figure, right? Most of us is just empty space, right? We're coming to the Quranic verses, all right? Don't worry. <laughs> okay, now, th these two figures are important, all right? So the Big Bang happened 13.7 billion years ago and our Earth is approximately 4.5 billion years old, all right? These figures are actually accurate, I do believe them, yeah? Because they, they've measured rocks, the oldest rocks on Earth, they've measured them to be about 3.5 three, three billion, three billion years old, yeah? I don't know, I, I think they found them in Australia, yeah, I believe so. But it's a protected area, that they won't tell anybody. <laughs> I'll all go down there, isn't it? Have a look. <laughs> yeah, they found three these really old rocks, really, really old rocks. <clears throat> right, so let's look at the creation of the Holy Quran. Now, as I said, if the Quran is Allah's word and the universe is Allah's creation, there's got to be a total agreement between the two. There can't be any any ambiguity whatsoever right the words of the Quran have to match what this what the universe is all about perfectly others the Quran isn't perfect then is it others Allah isn't perfect so it, it must match perfectly so I've always said the Arabic language is a perfect language to use to understand science right, and I'll prove it now okay let's look at one verse in the Holy Quran I, I I've started with this one because it just brings, gives us a flavor of what's happening. Allah says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالسَّمَاءَ أَبَنَيْنَاهَا بِأَيْدٍ وَإِنَّا لَمُوسِعُونَ Right? وَالسَّمَاءَ أَبَنَيْنَاهَا The heavens بَنَيْنَاهَا We have built her, we have constructed her بِأَيْدٍ with might, with power. Well, inna la musi'un, and we are the ones who are expanding the expanding the heavens. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yes, Allah said fourteen hundred years in the Holy Quran ago. Right? He said we are expanding the universe. You are not expanding it. Not only have we built it, we're making it bigger every single day. Every single second is getting bigger. This totally agrees. Right, with what they've just discovered, Hubble discovered, I think in 1920s or 30s, he discovered it, right? He, he could have just read the Quran. 
rather than search around the skies for 20 years, isn't it? And if you look at the root word, wasu'a, musi'un is one who does something, one who expands, right? Wasu'a means to be wide, to be roomy, to be spacious, to be vast, to be extensive. So Allah is saying, we are making it more spacious, we are making it more extensive. <coughs> and sama, the, the sky, is actually it's got a very, very good root meaning. Because sama doesn't just mean something which is high, which is raised, which is lofty. also means it goes beyond our understanding. So, by the very nature of the, of the root word, it, it explains everything about the expansion of the universe and how it's so difficult for us to understand because what you're expanding into, you can't understand it. It's beyond our understanding. <laughs> so, this verse can explain how much power Allah has put into the universe is absolutely huge. Allah hasn't said we created it, He said, look, we created it with power, with might. And not just that, it wasn't just, you know, boof and it's there, actually we're making it bigger so you can see what we're doing. We're still doing something, you can see it. <coughs> and if you really want to understand it, you have to connect to Allah Azza wa Jal, to connect, to connect to the Qur'an, connect to Rasulullah Wasallam. This ma'rifa we talk about, you can't get it from science. You get it through spirituality. You get it through links to Allah and His Messenger Wasallam. This is what understanding is all about. That's what ma'rifa means. And the Sufi have coined this phrase you know, thousands, hundreds of years ago. They said, your intellect can't understand Allah. Your intellect can't understand his creation, but Allah can, if you connect to him, he can put it into your spirituality so that you understand. So, understanding Allah's laws and his creation and his universe within scientific thinking is not possible. You can understand a bit, but your mind isn't calibrated properly. It's your soul that has to connect to your mind. Remember, science can't explain why. It can only explain how. And even then it struggles. So to explain why, you have to connect to Allah Azza wa Jal. This next verse, 2130, page 6 now we're on. <coughs> this directly talks about the Big Bang. Right? Directly talks about it. Awalam yara ladina kafaru anna samawati wal arub kana ta ratakan fafataqna huma. Right? In fact, it continues. Wa ja'alna min al ma kulla shay hai. Afala yu'minun. The translation is, do not the unbelievers see that the anna samawat, the heavens, plural, wal arud, and the earth, singular, kanata ratqan, they were both ratqan, meaning together. So the heavens and the earth are together. At the moment they're separated, aren't they? But Allah said, no, they're together. Fafataqnahuma, and then we sent them apart. We ripped them apart. Wajalna minal ma, and I'm not going to deal with this bit in this lecture. We made minal ma from water, kulli shay, everything hay that's living. Afala yu'minun, don't you understand? Oh, sorry, don't you believe? Couple of things, right? First of all, who is Allah referring to? Allah is talking to the unbelievers. He's not talking to the Muslims. Of course, I mean he's talking to the Muslims. But he's, he's calling the unbelievers. That's very, that's very interesting. Because he knows it's the unbelievers that will try and use this to prove God doesn't exist. And he's saying, no, this proves my existence. 
Can you see what I've done? Can you get it into your heads? You can't even look at the sky without becoming tired after a few minutes, right? It's taken you years to come up with this Big Bang Theory. This is what I've done. And I've done this in the way I've even allowed you to see what I've done. And what have I done? I've, I've done this, I've brought everything together into one singularity, right? Then I've caused it to explode. That's what I've done. Now you've just seen, now you've just discovered it, then you believe. Not only have I done that, he goes, look what I've done with regards to life. I've made every living thing out of water. That's a different lecture we're going to have on evolution and stuff. <laughs> so if you look at the root words, رَتَقَى because Allah says, كَانَتَا رَتَقًا We made both of them, رَتَقًا, together. So the heavens and the earth were together. Now the reason Allah has only mentioned the earth and then everything else, because the earth is the most important thing to us. This is where we live, this is where we survive, this is where we die. Right? So he said, this place of your existence and everything you see around you, the whole cosmos, we've actually, it was actually together once upon a time. At time t equals zero. Now, if you ever have the ability, if Allah says, right, ask me any dua, I'll answer it. You know, if one of you can say, Ya Allah, show me time t equals zero, right? Just let me know what you see. Okay. Forget about asking for a Ferrari or a Porsche. Or Just ask for that, okay? And then you can become, you can get the Nobel Prize if you want, you know. You can write a paper on it. So, Rataqa, to mend, to repair, to patch up, to sew. So, Allah has basically got everything and put it together. That's what He's done. Then, Fataqa, when you get some material and you rip it, and it's not easy to rip material, right? If I give you this cloth, it's not easy to rip it. I mean, it's pretty dirty cloth, you don't want to rip it anyway. You, it's not easy to rip. Get, get something, you know, get a piece of linen or, or denim, you can't rip it. So, fataqa means a huge amount of power to rip. In other words, Allah put some power, put some energy into that. And He put the energy in and He caused it to expand. And he's continuing to expand it with the energies put in. But in Allah Musi'un, we continue to expand it. Our miracle, our creation still is happening. <clears throat> and this verse specifically to the unbelievers, the Allah knows you're going to discover this and you're going to think how great you are, but I am the great one because I'm the one who's done it. You've just seen it, or bits of it. <coughs> So whenever science discovers something, I'm always happy because it always proves God that exists, it doesn't it? It never ever disproves God. Never have the fear, oh they found this. No, no, Alhamdulillah they found it. Trust me, it'll prove God exists. So this verse directly talks about the Big Bang and using language which even now we can understand. <coughs> now what about the age of the universe because what I've done <coughs> what I've done is uh, I've taken some verse from the Holy Quran the first is Allah الذي خلق السماوات والأرض ما بينهما في ستة أيام. Now you've heard the Bible saying God created the world, the universe in six days. Then Sunday he had a bit of a rest. He's a bit tired. <laughs> so <laughs> what they've done? What Allah is saying here? He's using ayam days. He's he's actually saying days, right? But in other verses, which I haven't quoted, other verses Allah says one day is like 50,000 years. So what that means is, these are Allah's days. They are, they are of certain time, we don't know. Okay? But specifically, he's talking about the heavens and the earth and what is in between. In other words, everything. But 
The reason Allah said it like that is, 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 is a reason, right? So, heavens and the earth, what you can see and in between what you can't see, scientists are trying to find something called dark matter, alright? They can't see it, which is dark. Makes sense, yeah? So, Allah is saying, whatever you can see, whatever you can't see, including the laws, the energy, everything was together, alright? And he made all of this in six periods of time. Right. In another verse, Allah says, خَلَقَ الْأَرْضِ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ Now you're learning a little bit of Arabic, right? يَوْمَيْنِ means two days. Right? So Allah created the earth, or sorry, two periods of time. So in the first verse, six periods for creation of the universe in the second verse the earth was created in two periods assuming each period is the same length right let's take the six periods to be 13.7 billion years right so if we take two thirds of uh, uh, if we take uh, one third of that which is the amount of time the earth took to create Two, one third of 13.7 is actually 2 point, sorry, is actually 4.5, 4 billion years. So using Allah's verses and 13.7 billion, we've calculated the Earth's age to be 4.56 billion years old. And the scientists have said it's 4.54 billion years old. Do it the other way around. Use the, use the Earth's age to work out age of the universe. And you work out at 13.68 billion years. So in other words, Allah said the Earth is one third of the age of the universe. That's what Allah said 1400 years ago. Now if I, if I were to say to you, you know, put, if I said to you 1400 years ago, right, write down proportions of how old the universe is and how old the earth is you wouldn't know what on earth to write Allah's written it and we can understand it and by the way this 13.7 this recent figure it used to be 13.5 it used to be 15 by the way about 30 years ago when I, I remember when I was a little bit younger they, they were saying 15 billion years and now they've grown to 13.7 but Allah's written it, you know, years ago. No, it's two, it's one third. Wherever you work it out, it's one third. And they worked out the age of universe and the age of earth independently. And the proportions are the same. So, because of this, I can say science is possibly coming to the right answer. Right? It hasn't proven Quran, because we don't need to prove Quran. Quran is true. Right? But Quran has proven, yeah, okay, you might be right, well done. Taking a bit of time, but I had this figure 1400 years ago. Okay, so you're catching up. Good, glad to see that. <coughs> so, when you meet Richard Dawkins, well done, Richard. Not bad. <laughs> Took your whole life to get there, but it was written there all along. Okay. Right, so just, just in summary, we, we've shown the expansion of the universe, right? The Big Bang and the ages of the Earth with respect to the age of the universe from the Holy Quran, right? And we've just looked at the Holy Quran verses very, very briefly. In addition, we understand a little bit more about the nature of the universe and the Big Bang and gravity and light and etc. And y y you can say, SubhanAllah, it's absolutely amazing. You know, it's mind boggling. So, when Allah says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, which is the first verse of the Holy Qur'an, praise be to Allah, who sustains the universe, who sustains the world, is exact translation. You've got to really appreciate that verse a little bit more now. da'wana, and Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Any questions?
Will this make you watch Star Trek now then? Allah, Allah, Allah.